Um, amen. As long as they don't keep tabs on how long I preach, that's the main thing. Okay. Amen. Matthew 14, uh, verses 27 through... No, let me see. We're going to start at verse 22 and go to verse 33. Amen. Familiar passage of scripture. Um, I was going to continue with this session of messages from, uh, from Chronicles. Where we were, we'll probably jump back to that at some point in time. I really felt to, uh, to come here to this particular message today. And uh, I like to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. And I think that's probably a good thing. Amen. Amen. The fact is, I know it's a good thing. But not just good for pastors. Everybody said amen. amen. It's good for everybody to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost, right? In order for that to happen, you've got to have the Holy Ghost. So uh, having it inside, having it renewed, having God fill you regularly. This has been at least um, over the last months or actually the last year and probably a little bit. One of the biggest concerns that I have is that we get used to sitting in our homes, doing service um, in our pajamas or whatever the case may be, and, and uh, just not having a real move of the Holy Ghost within us. And uh, I, I think that to some extent, I think the enemy would like us to be comfortable in that kind of a setting. That's right. mm -hmm. Because I think he'd be happy with us not having the Holy Ghost moving in our lives, through our lives, having us filled again and again to overflowing so that it begins to touch those that are around us. So even though it's not a part of my message today, stay filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. In your private prayer life, in services, whatever it takes, driving in your car, if you feel the Holy Ghost, just close your eyes while you're driving, lift your hands and start speaking in tongues. No, don't close your eyes. <laughs> Pull over would be a good thing to do. But by all means, allow the Holy Ghost to be able to fill you and continue to work in, in your lives. Amen. 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 Our salvation is inclusive of a number of different things, of course. And, and the first one is belief. The second one is, of course, our repentance. Number three would be baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. And the last one, the fulfilling part of that that brings us from death into life is the infilling of the Holy Ghost in our lives. This did not happen in the New Testament. That belief it did not happen at repentance. It only happened after uh, after they were baptized with the exception of the Samaritans. And uh, so we know that God has promised it. If we repent, he's promised it. If you're baptized in Jesus' name, if you're watching online today, I want you to know that that salvation plan that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost has not changed. Still the same salvation plan that began with this particular time in the book of Acts at the very beginning in the first and the second chapter, which is the history of our church age. Amen. 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 Yes. Now, Matthew chapter 14, 27 through 30. As I mentioned, uh, that's not a part of my message today. It is a good one. Uh, so let's read, shall we? Uh, we're going to start in verse 22 and read to verse uh, 30, 33, right? Yep. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the, but the boat by this time was a long way from land, beaten by the waves for the wind was, and I think the King James says contrary, yeah. uh, my version says was against them. Right. And in the fourth watch of the night, which is about between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning, uh, where is it there? But in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, one word, come. And so Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. And when he saw the wind, he was afraid. Beginning to sink, he cried out. He said, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? 
And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And let's pray together, shall we? Father, we just uh, we love you so very much. And thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to preach, for the opportunity to be your servant today. Father, what a privilege it is to be a part of your kingdom. So, Lord, I just pray today that you will uh, just anoint uh, me as I preach. Father, that I know your word is always anointed, but I just pray a special anointing right now to reach into all of the lives of those that are here, those that are watching online. Father, that you will begin to work in each life, and draw, Lord, that you will draw each one of us closer to you. Lord, whatever is amiss, reveal it. Whatever is right, confirm it. Father, that your word may be able to have its authority and its presence in our lives continuously. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. Let's take a few moments. Let's just worship the Lord together, shall we? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just lift up your voices, lift your hands right now. Let's put all other thoughts aside. Just put all our worries and our cares and the thoughts about what we're doing after church. Let's just put those aside right now. Let's just worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you and I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And if you're here, uh, you can be seated. If you're standing at home, of course, uh, you can also be seated if you wish. And uh, we're, uh, we're such a privileged people today. Now, I know there's always a certain amount of distraction right. in church services yeah. there's always things that you know you want to take care of you want to see what everybody else looks like is doing and whether they're worshiping or whether or not they're involved or what they look like today what they're dressed like today and all the rest of it you know what we just need to stop all of that right. we need to just concentrate on on one thing initially and that's worship Secondly, we need to center ourselves on the Word of God and what the Word of God has to say to us. Right. And those things should be so important in our lives that I believe that through those that God will be able to do a mighty work within us. And not only within us, but we have so many people that are around us that need God in their lives. Amen. Amen. And to a large degree, I know God can work independently of us, and He has in areas of the world, but... But to the most extent, to the largest extent, God has set it in his church that we are to be the ones that are going to carry Jesus to this world. Amen. Amen. God wants to use you to win souls. It is his will that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would so fill you that that anointing would flow out of you and touch other people's lives that are around you. And so I want to encourage you today that, that you just get as much of God as you possibly can into your life at all times. This particular passage of Scripture, of course, you've heard me preach on this probably multiple times. I did get a little notice from the United Pentecostal Church recently that uh, thanked me for my 40 years of ministry. And uh, within the United Pentecostal Church, and, and my wife and I came here within that first year of uh, getting a local license at that particular time. And so it's been 40 years since I've been here in Port Alberni, since we came to start the church. And uh, that's pretty awesome. Amen. Amen. I, I don't regret having come here. It was the will of God that we came and our lives have been built here. We've raised our children. We've got grandchildren here. And it's been awesome to be able to be a child and a servant of God uh, these years that we've been here. This, uh, this passage of Scripture. So if you've been here during these last 40 years, you've heard me preach from this. I love, I love preaching about Peter. And I especially, uh, I heard messages uh, from this passage of scripture when I was first in the church, and, and it 
really impacted me. And the reason I like preaching about Peter is because he's so human. Yeah. Yeah, right. And and I kind of relate to that. Not necessarily to some of the mistakes that he made, but at least to the fact that, you know what, the Bible doesn't really pull punches. It allows us to see the humanity of those that were called. And although there are some organizations that would like to apply sainthood to all of these, can I tell you right now that sainthood is not... Uh, relegated to a very few who have notoriety or some sort within the church. We are all saints of God. Yeah. Amen. So I'm sitting here, or I'm standing, you're sitting, in the group of a bunch of other saints. But but the Bible and, and, and God just has this thing that he shows us the humanity of those that were going to be not only prevalent, but we're going to carry this message and, and in Peter's case begin by being the first leader of this early church that began in the book of Acts. But it shows him in all of his humanity through all of it. And Peter, probably more so than any other, seems to jump from, from being just right on top of it and know exactly what's going on to making the stupidest mistakes. He just, in one moment, he's declaring that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the God, he is Father. And in the very next moment, he says uh, that Jesus is going to be crucified and Jesus called him a devil. Yeah. And so within this individual, uh, I can see so much of each and every one of us. There are times when we do really, really good. Yeah. And there's times we're right on top of it all. Everybody's looking off to my left, so I'm assuming there's something coming here. Yeah. Uh, so if the ushers can make sure that you, if people are welcome, make sure they feel welcome to come and join us if they wish. Oh, okay. Um, just, just go and, Ted, go and meet with them and talk with them, please. All righty. Uh, so as we're, uh, as we're meeting together here today and, and if we've been through this before where the police have come, we're just going to continue with our church service here. Everybody stay centered in on me. He can take care of it all over there. This boat ride that we read about in Scripture in this particular instance is so much like our lives, so much like the way that we have uh, existed, the way that we live our lives. We start out in this world. We come into this world uh, red-faced, crying, unable to do too much for ourselves, dependent solely upon our parents for everything, uh, from food to clothing to bedding to all of it. And we begin to make our way through this life doing all of the things that, uh, that all of us encounter. We go through schooling, we get to a place where we get an occupation and we begin to work and and we hold down jobs and all the rest of it. And we go through all of that and we begin our journey, if you would, on one side of this life. And we will end our journey at some point down the road in our lives. Our journeys will end. This life is not forever. As much as we would like to hold on to this life and as much as we would like to delay that that final shore and delay that time when we arrive on that final shore... I want you to know that sooner or later for each and every one of us, should the Lord tarry, we are going to reach a place where we will pass from this life and into a better one. Amen. If we are gods, That's right. we will pass through into, this other, into that next chapter of our lives. And so it is that along the way, uh, we're going to meet a bunch of different people. There's going to be different people that will be involved in our lives to some degree or another. They are going to impact our lives. They will affect our lives. Uh, we may think in some cases that they're going to be solely negative in our lives. But even in all of that, there are some things that, that God will want to teach us from those that, that will impact our lives or be a part of our lives. You are always going to meet people that are negative and doubtful. There are always those that, that go through all of life looking at the jars being mostly empty. Yeah. Yeah. It does not matter, it seems, like how good things are in their lives. It doesn't matter how many miracles they may see or how many things that God has done for them. They still are looking forward to the worst that can possibly happen. 
And so you'll recognize these people. They're kind of like Thomas, right? Where when Lazarus was, uh, was in the process of dying or had just passed away and, and uh, Jesus told his disciples that, that he had gone and, and uh, that they were going to go and, and now visit the family. And Thomas said these words. He said, well, if that's the case, if we're all going to die, why don't we just go there and die too? Now, you've never met anybody like that, have you? That just, well, you have, okay. So there are always going to be those. Even at the end, after Jesus' resurrection and, and the testimony of the disciples and the testimony of the women that had seen him alive after his crucifixion, and that Thomas said, I'm never going to believe until I am able to put my finger in his hand or my hand into his side. And then will I, for sure, then I will believe. And so we're going to encounter negative people. We're going to encounter doubtful people. The, the, the difficult part with people like that is sometimes we can relate a little bit too much. Sometimes those negative attitudes or that negative talk can begin to become a part of our lives. Too. Be careful what you listen to continuously. Be careful what you feed yourself with. There's so much that is negative and so much false information that is going on around us in this day and age and so much that is not true you be careful what you impart be careful what you bring into yourself because it can begin to affect your thinking as well then i often have wondered how many people were affected by thomas's thinking and his his doubtfulness and his negativity at times then you're going to also meet people who are ambitious and aggressive they don't care who they walk over they don't care if, uh, if they have to step on you to get a little bit higher. And whether it's in God's kingdom or whether it's in this world, they're always looking for a way to get ahead. And James and John were that way. They, they not only uh, petitioned Jesus that one of them would sit on the right hand and one on the left hand side whenever Jesus installed himself in his kingdom. But they even got their mom involved. They got their mom to go to Jesus and say, hey, hey, I got two boys that have been following you for these three and a half years. Uh, when you present yourself as king, when you begin to rule in Israel, because you're still looking at a physical kingdom, can one of them sit on your right hand and one sit on the left hand? And so you're always going to find these type of ambitious and aggressive individuals that you're going to encounter throughout your life. These are also the same ones who... Uh, when they saw others that weren't exactly following Jesus said, hey, let's rain down fire and brimstone on all of them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and Jesus, of course, says, we're not, we don't uh, quite do that. And, uh, and so we're going to do things a little differently. But you're going to meet people like that. And to some extent, they're going to hurt you on the way because they're not necessarily concerned with how you feel. That's right. true. That's they're not considering... How, how this may affect you. The only th way that they think is how this affects me and my ideas of where I can go and how, how promoted I can get. Then you're going to find people that are just helpers in your life. They'll just, they'll just jump in and they'll help you with things. Andrew would be an example of that who brought Peter to Jesus. And, and Philip was another example of that who brought Nathaniel to be with Jesus as well. And so you're going to find people that are helpful in your lives as you make your way through from this journey from one shore to the other. And then you're going to meet the people that are like Judas. People yeah. that are liars. People that are betrayers. People right. that are thieves. Yeah. People that just desire to do whatever's wrong. And you're going to encounter them. You say, why do we have to have people like that in our lives? Well, because that's what the world is full of. It's full of these types of people. Right. And if you're making your way through life, the only way you're going to avoid these is to go live out in the bush somewhere just by yourself. And then you'll probably have all of those situations arise inside of you anyway. Because yeah. you've got to deal with you, right? We're also in this life, this journey from one shore to the other. We're going to encounter all sorts of different kind of conditions in our lives. We're going to have times and... And uh, I was thinking back to this when I was praying and studying for the sermon and this message today, thinking back to the times that my wife and I have uh, been here in Port Alberni, all 40 years of it. And from the time that we first came here and both of us had felt separately that God wanted us to be here, there have been times that we have wondered whether we're going to make it to the next week 
financially, emotionally, and spiritually, just because of things that had happened in our lives. And I, pardon me, I don't have time to get into all of those today. Maybe another time I'll preach and, and we'll talk about just our testimony of times that we have been here in Port Alberni. But I can tell you without, without any question, without any doubt at all, that there have been times in both my wife and I's lives when when the, the storms that we were facing and the things that we were encountering at that particular time were enough to just about destroy us spiritually, emotionally, and financially. And, and still through all of that, both of us made this decision that we were just going to hold on. Right. We're just going to hold on. The Bible says when you have done all this, yeah, you can to stand when you can't seem to advance, when you can't seem to make another step, then just stay where you are. Just stand. For goodness sakes, I'm jumping ahead. Don't go backwards. Don't go back. Just just stay where you are at the very least. And, and so many people have started to give up on things just because it's uncomfortable. Or it's difficult. Or it, it just doesn't, for them at this particular time, just doesn't make sense. And... And I want you to know that sometimes life just doesn't make sense. That's right. Sometimes we don't understand what's going on or why things are happening the way that they are. But I'll tell you something today. There is one that understands yeah. what is going on in our lives. And he understands the things that are happening in us. And I want you to know that the Bible says that all things will eventually work out for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen. God knows what he's doing, even if we don't understand what he's doing. God still knows what he's doing. But there's going to be times, and, and you're going to face times where it's hard to make any headway. These, my wife and I went kayaking one, uh, one day down at Cameron Lake, and, and we both have separate kayaks. And, and so we're out in the kayaks there, and the wind was blowing on that particular day. And I don't know if you've ever driven by Cameron Lake when it's a little bit rough out there. Anyway, we're in these kayaks. Of course, we got our, you know, all our safety gear, our, our uh, life jackets and everything on. And, and we put our kayaks in the water and we begin to paddle. And, and a little ways out, there was this tree. The top of the tree was coming out of the water. And, and we're kind of headed in that direction and trying to make our way. And we're paddling like crazy. I don't know if any of you have ever kayaked before. And we're just paddling like crazy. And the tree is not getting any closer to us. It just seems to be always just that same distance away. And, uh, and of course, we were, we were going into the wind and into the waves, and all of them were coming against us. And, and, uh, and so it is with the disciples. When they got into this boat on the one shore, maybe things were clear and, and the waters were calm when they got in. But, boy, they got to about that fourth watch of the night. And now things are not so calm anymore and the wind is against them and contrary and, and the waves are coming against them and it feels like they're just not getting anywhere. I don't know if you've ever felt that way spiritually. But sometimes it just feels like there's a lot of stuff that's fighting against you as far as making any headway in your relationship with God. But oh, you just need to keep on going. You just need to keep on paddling because sooner or later there's going to be an encounter that's going to change things. Amen. Amen. So we're always going to hit rough times in this life, this journey from one shore to another. There's always going to be times of fair weather and uh, these, these two on either extreme may not be the norm for our lives, but those fair weather times are kind of nice, aren't they? When there's no waves and there's no wind and, and the job is good and the money's coming in and the bills are paid and, and your relationships just seem to be just cruising along on autopilot and everything's just going wonderful and, and, uh, and everything just, and your relationship with God is good and, and these fair weather times are awesome. They don't happen that often. Yeah. Because you see the norm for all of our lives is neither the extreme storms that we hit on one side, nor is it the calm and fair weather that we hit on the other side, but it is that choppy area in between where some things may be going good and, and maybe at times your finances are going good, 
but you're having trouble in your relationships. Or, or maybe both of those are good, but you're having trouble getting a hold of God. And it just seems like there's choppy weather. That seems to be the norm for most people. This is where most people live, is in this particular experience between the extreme bad and the extreme good. Those are things that we will encounter on this journey of life. But in the midst of it all, uh, for Peter and the disciples as they make their way across, uh, Jesus comes walking to them on the water between, the thir or between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock in the morning. I don't know if any of you or all of you maybe have had times where you've worked at nights and gotten to that time. We used to, um, back when I first started moving houses, I was always relegated to the very bottom position at the start. My dad made sure that, that that's where my brothers and I started. And so oftentimes when we'd move houses at night, they don't allow them to do this anymore. Uh, we'd go up and we'd ride the roof and carry the wires over the houses as we were moving them. And so it was always, always during that time between one o'clock uh, after midnight and six o'clock in the morning, we had to be off the roads. And, and so many of the times between those times, it just, those are, those are hard times. Uh, you can, you can feel like maybe at the beginning of your night shift that you're doing okay. And maybe, you know, if you've had enough coffee, it'll keep you awake for those of you that work night shifts, but but boy, you get towards those witching hour, I think is what my daughter used to call it when she was a nurse in the hospital here, is the witching hour is between those times. And it just is hard, hard to stay awake, hard to keep focused, hard to make sure you're constantly doing the right thing. I tell you, if I'm in the hospital, that's the time I don't want those people coming to take care of me because yeah. I'm not sure whether they're all there. Uh, but uh, between three and six o'clock in the morning, uh, Jesus comes walking on the water to the disciples. And can I just stop there for a moment? In each one of our lives, for those of you that have encountered Jesus Christ in your life, he's come to you as an individual in a personal manner into each one of your lives. I don't care if you were raised in the church and if you've been in the church all your life, it really doesn't matter. You have had to have that personal and, and intimate connection and encounter with jesus christ because you see even though he wants all of the world to be saved he comes to us as individuals That's right. and so he came to his disciples and walking on the water in the, in the early mornings in the early morning of the night and uh, and that encounter was very very personal for the disciples we at least i'm assuming today i don't know maybe about some of you that are watching online but but uh, maybe all of you uh, that are here have had that encounter and have made this, this step. We take a step out of our lives that we have been so comfortable with for so long. Yeah. And we take that step into the unknown by faith. That's right. Peter said to him, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. Jesus' one word to Peter was just come. I don't know if you've ever heard that. I heard that voice at the age of 27 when I came and gave my life to God and, and repented of my sins. And I was baptized in Jesus' name. And I remember being filled with the Holy Ghost. And remember how personal and intimate and close that time was. What a tremendous time in my life to see my life change. Knowing that God is not just up there watching and interested in my life, but, but that he filled me with his spirit. And that he was intimately engaged in who I was and what I was going to be and what my life was going to entail. Peter said, bid me come, and just one word, come. Jesus is always the same words to every one of us. Come. Come closer to me. And, you know, in order to do that, if we just step out of the comfort of our past lives and, and, and just start to leave that behind, Listen, forgetting those things which are behind. Right. Reaching forward to those things that are in front of me. I press towards the, the high calling of Christ Jesus. I press towards it. I'm moving towards it. That's our goal. That's our aim. Forget about the past. All those things that you were so many times we come to God and we're still trying to drag our past in along with us. But we've got to leave that behind and say, just Jesus. So Peter takes that 
step of faith. He may have been criticized by the other disciples. They may have said, hey, hold on a minute. You're going to sink like a rock, Peter. Well, Peter could swim. We know that because at the end, he swam from the boat into shore to be with Jesus. So he could swim. He wasn't afraid of the water. He lived his life on the water. Now, maybe the waves were so high at this point in time, it might have been a danger to him. But I'm sure that he felt like he could have come back to that boat if he'd really wanted to. Yeah. So he get out and, and he's walking on the water and... And, and you can criticize him all you want for, for sinking, but at least he got out to walk on the water, and he's the only one that did that besides Jesus. Right. But he's like us, and like, like every human being, that after a while, the things that you see going on around you seem to consume your heart and your mind and your eye and your vision, and you just kind of grasp a hold of stuff, and you begin to look at COVID, and you begin to look at everything else that is going on around you, or you look at your relationship, or your finances, or what's happening, and you begin to look around, and your vision gets off of where it needs to be. And when your vision gets off and you start to become consumed with the things that you're looking at that are around you in this world, all you see is waves and wind yeah. and storm. That's right. Because that's what goes on in our world. That's, right. that's all you begin to see. And when you begin to see that, when you begin to look at that, you lose the vision that kept you afloat, that kept you on top of those storms and those waves. And immune to the wind. Because you see the only way that that happens. As long as our eyes are focused on where they need to be. We can. Peter did not. When he stepped out of the boat. He did not take a lifeline with him. Right. Hebrews tells us that. Uh, uh, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Uh, it is certain that we can take nothing with us. Anything else besides just him going over the boat, anything else that he tried to carry with him would have surely weighed him down and caused him to sink sooner than he did. He didn't make allowances for turning around and going back to the boat. In 1519, Captain Hernan Cortez arrived in Veracruz, Mexico. To conquer the land and be, the first thing that he did is he gave the order for those that were with him. He says, I want you to go back and I want you to burn the ships. Just burn the ships. Just burn them. But hold on a minute. If we burn the ships, we're not going to be able to go back home again. That's the idea. Right. In our lives, when we come to the Lord, I want you to know we need to make it an all or nothing. It needs to be that we set ourselves, it's Jesus or nothing. When Peter began to sink and the waves and the wind consumed him and, and he began to sink, the first thing that he thought about was turning around and going back to the boat. No, no he didn't. Uh, right. There was no consideration for him to turn around. I don't know how far he walked from that boat. I don't know how far he made it before the wind and the waves started to consume him and that's all he could see. But I want you to know there was no consideration in Peter that I'm going to turn around and go swimming back to the boat. Listen, don't go back to anything that you gave up when you came to God. Don't start turning around and bringing it all back into your life because little by little, you're going to find yourself closer to where you were before you came to him. But let's leave it all behind and let's just say, this is it. It's an all or nothing thing. And so for Peter, it was all or nothing. Musicians, you can come if you would. <clears throat> Faith that Peter had at this point in time is something that we need to have in, in each one of us. The faith to, to just jump out and step over the gunwales and, and into the area. You say, well, I may sink. Yeah, you may. Yeah, there may be times when, when you're just so consumed with things that are around you when you're going to begin to sink or you begin to lose your ability to stay above those troubles and those trials and those struggles that you're going through. When they will consume you or, and start to pull you down, there may be times when that, but I'll tell you something, there's nothing as rewarding as there is 
that when we are on top of the water and Jesus is the only focus of our lives. When the waves can't affect us and the wind doesn't bother us. The only time that happens is when our focus is completely on the one who has control of the wind and the waves. Peter began to sink, of course. There was no consideration for, as I mentioned, there was no consideration for turning around and going back. There was no lifeline back to the boat that James was holding on to to drag him back to the boat. There was nothing, just Peter going down in the water. Now understand, he could swim, but still his only focus, even when he started to go down, is I can't go back to where I was. My only, I've got to get to him. And the words, Jesus saved me, came from his mouth as he's sinking down into the water. And as those words, see, we have to, we have to recognize that we need saving yeah. you've got to be able to say the words there has to be that appeal that is made to god and said father save me right. i can't do this without you i can't i can't live in this world with all these storms and the wind that's going on around me and everything that's happening in our world right now can sometimes so consume us that that's all we see, that's all we listen to, that's all we watch it is stuff to do with what's going on around us when our focus needs to be Jesus in the midst of all of this, you save me. In the midst of all of this, Lord, you're my lifeline. In the midst of all of this, Jesus, you're the only thing that matters. And as we begin to cry out in the midst of our storm and possibly sinking, Jesus, save me, that I like what the Bible says there. And immediately, Jesus reached down his hand, grabbed a hold of Peter's hand, and picked him up. And they went back to the boat, and the wind was immediately calm, and the waves were gone. Guess what? That wind and those waves... At that particular time for Peter, for whatever reason, the Lord needed Peter to understand that he had to be first, that all these other things were going to be okay. If they come into your life, it's okay. I'm still going to be there. I'm still going to be there. No matter what's happening in our lives, Jesus is answer for all of us. I'm still going to be there for you. Let's stand together, shall we? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to give all of you the opportunity. And again, I don't know where all of you are. I don't know where all of you are or who's watching from home or where your life is or your relationship with with God is. But today, right now, in this place, this parking lot right here, and for those of you that are at home right now, I want you to know the answer is still the same as it was for Peter. Lord, if it's you, bid me come. There's a one word answer that always comes from the Lord. Come. Come on. Step out. Step away. Come closer. I know that you're having struggles right now. I know you're seeing the storms. Just come. Just come as close as you can get. Amen. So as they're singing here today, let's, uh, let's just take some time, close our eyes, and uh, let's begin to draw close to him. I don't know, as I mentioned, I don't know where you stand right now with your relationship. If you're struggling, I don't know if it's a place right now where, where you need to get up out of the waves or whether you're sinking and you just need to cry out, Jesus, help me. But I know one thing for sure, that Jesus' answer is still the same. Come. Amen.